You are watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch where we bring some of the major news developments from around the world. Today's headlines, highest number of attacks against environmental defenders recorded in 2020. All charges dropped against US activists who organized anti-racism protests. More than 60,000 families evicted during the pandemic in India. Norway's Labour Party secures landslide victory in general election. Amid vaccine gap, experts say COVID-19 booster doses not widely needed yet. 227 people were killed in 2020 while defending their homes, land, livelihoods and ecosystems. Over half of these attacks took place in just three countries, Colombia, Mexico and the Philippines. These findings are part of a new report by Global Witness called The Last Line of Defense. Apart from killings, the attacks also took the form of surveillance, sexual violence, etc. 70% of these attacks were linked to deforestation and industries. 30% were reportedly linked to resource exploitation and infra infrastructure projects. Over one third of all fatal attacks targeted indigenous peoples. Indigenous communities were also the targets of five out of the seven recorded mass killings in 2020. The report notes that 226 of the killings were recorded in the countries of the global south. These regions are bearing the brunt of resource extraction by big companies and the related effects of the climate crisis. A U.S. district attorney has dropped the final charges against three protest leaders in the state of Colorado. Joel Northam, Lillian House and Terence Roberts had organized protests to demand justice for Elijah McLean. He was a 23-year-old black man who was killed by police and paramedics in 2019. Following mass protests, the Aurora Police Department launched an arrest campaign. Six activists were arrested in relation to three protests. Three protest leaders spent over a week in jail without any explanation. The district attorneys of the Adams and the Arapaho counties then drew up a list of 68 charges. This included a felony charge of kidnapping for simply holding a sit-in outside the police station. These charges were systematically dropped or withdrawn in March and April this year. The final 12 charges against Northam, House and Roberts were dropped on September 13th. All three are members of the Party for Socialism and Liberation. Over 257,000 people were evicted from their homes during the COVID-19 pandemic in India. Authorities demolished over 43,000 homes between March 2020 and July 2021. This comes down to an estimated 21 people losing their homes every hour. These, fig these figures have been provided by the Delhi-based Housing and Land Rights Network, or HLRN. While India was placed under a strict lockdown in 2020, over 170,000 people lost their homes. For instance, at least 12,000 homes were demolished in Khorigao, located on the outskirts of capital city Delhi. The locality is mostly made up of daily wage and migrant workers. Officials claim that their homes were built on protected forest lands, but the residents have stated that they were sold the land by local builders, often in collaboration with the forest department. With no alternative housing provided, many families continue to live in the rubble. Around 75 million Indians live in slums and informal settlements in urban areas. They often do not have access to any legal recourse in the event of an eviction. Norway's opposition Labour Party is set to form the next government after the election on September 13th. As per initial results, Labour has secured 48 seats in the 169-member parliament. A minimum of 85 seats will be required to form the majority. Coalition talks are reportedly underway with the Centre Party, which received 28 seats, and the Socialist Left Party, which got 13 seats. The Labour-led coalition will replace the Conservative government led by Prime Minister Arna Solberg, Labour leader Jonas Garstora is expected to head the new government. Meanwhile, the socialist Red or RODT party has also secured a significant victory of nine seats. Stora has indicated that talks will be held with RODT and the Green Party. Much of the electoral campaign was focused on Norway's oil sector, which forms 14% of its GDP. The Labour Party has advocated a gradual transition away from the industry. As per reports, the party has indicated that New exploration should be limited. Other issues included higher taxes to address growing inequalities. Tora has pledged to cut taxes for low- and middle-income families while increasing rates for the rich. It is important to note that Stora himself is one of the wealthiest politicians in Norway. 
International experts have stated that booster doses of the COVID-19 vaccine are not widely needed at this stage of the pandemic. Current vaccines also remain highly effective against severe symptoms across all main variants. The study was published in a medical journal, The Lancet, on September 13. The lead author has said that the priority is to provide vaccines to those who are still waiting for a first dose. This research follows repeated appeals by the WHO asking rich countries to hold off on a third dose. An estimated 52.7% of the US population has been fully vaccinated. This still makes it the lowest ranked among the G7 countries in terms of vaccinations. Meanwhile, less than 3% of the people across Africa are fully vaccinated. As per the Africa Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the total number of cases has crossed 8 million. South Africa currently has among the highest rate of vaccinations at 17.5%. However, it still remains one of the worst affected areas in the continent. The COVAX initiative has also continued to struggle with funding and supply shortages. Meanwhile, rich countries could have a surplus of 1.2 billion doses by the end of this year. And this is all we have for this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more such stories and videos, visit our website peoplesaspatch.org. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.